Good morning guys, Shelly from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's fairly early morning here. I just got done with my chicken chores. The, uh, there's a little bit of a breeze here, so hopefully it doesn't affect the camera any. Um, I've got my microphone on hoping that will help. I hope it does. The Blue Jays are crazy out here, so they're super loud. So. I'm hoping this will cut down on a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah, just letting the chickens out today, the big chickens. You may see them run around behind me. They're out in the woods. Um, and then the 10 little ones that I have, they're more like teenagers now. They're not really babies, but I still call them babies. But um, they are in the garden. Um, letting them run around in there. They do a lot less damage than the big ones do. They don't dig and dig and dig. And uh, they have strict rules not to eat my worms that are in there, so they know that. I've been keeping an eye on them to make sure they don't do that. Um, but yeah, they are having a blast in there. sitting here having some coffee by the fire pit. The fire's not going yet, but I'm thinking about getting it started today and cooking something in my Dutch oven. I'm not sure what. Um, I don't have anything thought out yet, so I have no idea um, <laughs> when that'll be. It might have to be for supper. But I was also thinking about cook cooking breakfast on the griddle this morning. Scott's still sleeping, so... Um, sometimes I can wake him up with that smell of breakfast in the morning, but if I do it outside, I'll have to open a window. <laughs> uh, so this coffee is really good this morning. Super yummy. I feel like the sound is really loud today, so I'm, I apologize if you hear trucks. The wind is blowing a different direction, and uh, it's bringing that noise from the road up the hill it's pretty pretty noisy but hopefully you don't hear that so i just wanted to um i don't even know what i want to talk about today but i do want to just have a little chat about um you know sometimes i'm up here and we're all alone there's nobody around and i feel guilty sometimes the way we live uh, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. Um, some days, but not all days. You have to put plans in place to help you do things a little bit easier. If something's hard, you got to think about a way around it to make it a little easier for you. Uh, you know, a lot of people do a lot of things without a tractor. We did that for many, many years, a long time. Uh, just so happened a friend had a tractor and uh, he was selling it and we knew him very well. We were like, hey, you know what? This is what, uh, what we need to help us move to the next level of being more prepared, getting us ready for whatever we want to do next. And man, oh man, that tractor was old, but that thing helped so much. Uh, it helped our backs. It made everything level, waist level for us so that we didn't have to bend over. It, so it saved a lot on our backs and, and uh, legs and, and just muscles in general. Um, it did a lot of heavy work for us that we didn't have to either hire out or try and find people to help us do that. Uh, and we had that before we moved up here. And then when we moved here, we had it for a couple years and we realized that you know <clears throat> it's wearing out it's old it's wearing out and this property is a little bit much for this old tractor so we got a new one because we needed it to do a lot of things around here um, and in order to progress and move forward we bought a new tractor and oh man it's been wonderful um, I'm trying to think of some other things that we have purchased. Uh, years ago, doing firewood, uh, whether it be for ourselves or for our in-laws or, or whoever, 
Um, Scott used to use a splitting mall to split firewood. We had some extra money and I said, I want to help do that. I want to be part of this process and I can't use a splitting mall. I have, but it's not easy for me. So we bought a wood splitter. We've had that wood splitter for a long time. But if you take care of your stuff, it will last a long time. Um, and so it's good to use things that, you know, the same with power, I guess. Um, solar power is easy as long as it's working, um, as long as it's hooked up, as long as you know what you're doing. We moved here not knowing very much. We did not know very much at all about solar power. We knew the sun hit the panels. Probably Scott knew a lot more than I did, as usual. Um, we knew, you know, I should speak for myself. I knew the sun hit the panels. I knew they charged up batteries. I didn't know the upkeep that it took. I didn't know the ins and outs. There is a lot of electrical stuff that goes with that. There's still a lot of wires and cords and lines. Um, that need upkeep to keep track of, to make sure they don't deteriorate, to make sure you don't have anything chewing on them, uh, weather and whatnot, um, breaking them down. We, um, we've learned a lot. We've been here uh, going on seven years in January. Yeah, it's Maine. We moved in here in January, no heat. There was no stove hooked up. We didn't even know we had a stove at the time. Uh, we moved in here and we were looking around for a pellet stove before we moved in, knowing we needed some kind of heat because there is no other heat here. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was interesting, but it was really nice to know because it was a uh, house that they had um, closed up and they took everything out because it's out in the middle of nowhere and they didn't want people to come in and, and steal and vandalize. They took the expensive stuff out and one of the expensive things was a uh, soapstone fireplace or stove. That thing is heavy. But we didn't even know we had it coming. We didn't know that that was part of stuff that was coming back into the house when we purchased it. Um, the bank had it all stored and it was just part of what was going on. Um, and so we're standing there and they're bringing in this big stove and what a blessing. We had no idea that that was going to be something that um, we were going to have. And boy, is that stove awesome. It took, uh, I wanna say three or four guys. I can't remember, I can think of a few. I can't remember all of them. But I do know that they um, had a hard time getting it in to the spot where it was supposed to go. But thank goodness they did. They got it in there. Um, and it was just a great thing, wonderful. Uh, and of course, being January, there was no wood anywhere to be had. Um, and we had all of ours done for the old house, but we left that for the people that bought that. So we scurried around and found the bio bricks that you can buy at uh, Tractor Supply. We bought a pallet of them or however they come by the ton and maybe, um, and that's how we heated our house with a little bit. We did get some a little load of firewood, but um, uh, that's how we heated our house for the longest time. We didn't have water for a long time. I was melting snow, and that year we didn't have a lot of snow. Thank goodness for not a lot of snow for moving and getting stuff into the house, but not for the, um, it, you know, for if you don't have any water for the melting snow. <laughs> Um, yeah, we could have gone to the store and bought it, but 
I mean, that's a little too easy, isn't it? <laughs> Got to do everything the hard way first and then find a way around it to make it easier. Um, we had somebody come and turn the water on. There was a pipe that was cracked. And while I was gone to the store, Scott called and said, buy towels, buy rags. We have a leak in the, living, in the dining room and there's water, an inch of water all over the floor. What a thing to, to hear about <laughs> when you're out and about, right? So, um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. But we got that cleaned up. We got the pipe fixed. We got our water turned on. It was January. Uh, we were warm. We had water. Still working on the batteries, um, which the water ran on a pump. So as long as uh, we didn't have the batteries hooked up, we didn't have water. Um, we got that hooked up pretty quickly, fairly quickly. It took a little bit because we had to have a friend help us. Many calls to the battery uh, to the uh, solar place that put in this system to kind of help us maneuver us to how we needed to go and, and actually he's up in northern Maine and he came down a couple times which was awesome to help us. Uh, now that we have it hooked up for the most part things have been pretty good once in a while we'll have little glitches and things and you've got to find find the way you've got to find your way. Uh, recently I've had a lot of comments on our channel about we would really love to go off grid or we'd really love to homestead and I just think you know that's amazing it's wonderful just remember there's going to be ups and downs don't give up just don't give up find the way around it you're gonna have an obstacle um, hit it hit it head first if you have to just just get it sometimes you're gonna have three or four and they're gonna pile up and you're gonna go oh man why why do I have to deal with this I'm just trying to live simple and you know do this this and this it doesn't always happen as easy as you think it's gonna just take a breath take a step take a moment Think about it. Think about how to work around it. Uh, same thing with the country. What's going on in the, in the world. Um, when this whole thing started with the pandemic and everything, um, I was getting all overwhelmed and bombarded with trying to keep track of what was going on trying to know everything, watch all the news stations, read all the articles, go online um, and look at all that stuff. It gets overwhelming and it's, it's got to be too much for me. I can't handle it. We moved out here to be away from all that stuff. Um, and I was bringing it in by watching all that. So I decided to turn it off. I don't hardly ever watch TV. I um, I go online. I went on YouTube a lot. That's how we ended up here on YouTube. Uh, we wanted people to see how we live and, and the things that we do and hopefully inspire people um, to, if they want to go off grid or homestead, to just do it. Just start now. Wherever you are, start now. Um, so I know a lot of people can't start a garden, but if you can do something inside, you can grow pepper plants inside. Um, boy, wouldn't that be awesome to just be able to walk into your living room wherever you have your pepper plant and grab a pepper off that in the middle of winter and cook a dish with your pepper that you grew in the wintertime. Um, there's just so many things so I guess sitting here I was just thinking that I just wanted to encourage people that if you are thinking about it just start um, if you're thinking about building up your food pantry uh, you're just not sure where to start just start just buy extra 
extra of things. Um, extra soups. If you like chicken noodle soup, buy extra chicken noodle soup. A couple extra cans. Um, if you like, uh, I don't know, I do this. If Scott drinks soda, if you like soda, grab an extra 12 pack of soda. Um, grab an extra of something every time you go shopping and put that aside. And eventually you will have quite a pantry set up with um, extra stuff in case something were to happen. Um, I don't know, just things I think about. When the power goes out here, I feel really guilty, not here, but in our area. It goes out a lot. Um, when it goes out in our area, I feel kind of guilty. Number one, because I don't know about it until I go, oh, to the post office or to the store just to pick up a little something to get gas, whatever. And I find out they're without power and I'm like, oh wow, I just left my house that's got power. Uh, and they have to call the local electric company to come fix their lines. Um, we don't have that. There is, you know, the off-grid people that, you know, around that set up these things and they'll come and help you, but boy, that's expensive. Got to work around it. Got to read. Got to watch some YouTube. Got to learn how to fix it yourself. Um, luckily, Scott's a really good researcher and uh, he retains the information really well, as opposed to me who you tell me your name and five seconds later I'll probably forget. And it's not because I don't <clears throat> want to know. That's just my brain just always, always going. So you never know. But luckily he's learned a lot of the stuff so we can troubleshoot if something's wrong. And I'm learning to do that as well. If I'm here by myself and it happens, I'll say, well, no, Scott said to watch this and do that. And that's how that works. Uh, so you just find a way around it. So I guess I just feel guilty when there's no power and I go into a store and they're like, sorry, we can't take cards because we don't have any power. And it's like, oh, wow, I just took a shower and left my house and had the radio going and <clears throat> I had no idea. So I feel bad about that, but hey, they've got somebody that can come and fix it for them. Uh, usually when we're out of power, it's a serious problem. <laughs> Um, sometimes, sometimes not. I mean, it all depends. It hasn't happened a lot, thank goodness, but you never know. But I was just thinking, you know, that I really hope that the people that want to homestead and that want to live off grid get a chance to. It can be hard, but it also can be rewarding. It can be fun. It's a lot of it is being outside, which I love. Love being outside in nature. I think that's why I love having chickens because it just drives me to be outside with them. Um, it makes me want to come out, work on the garden, work on clearing brush, work on firewood. There's always something to be done. I've had people say, boy, you must get awful bored up there. I really haven't yet. Maybe in the winter time when I can't go out and do a lot of the things that I normally do. But that's why I picked up crafting. I mean, I've been doing that for a long time before that, but I do crafting and, um, you know, you find stuff, you find a way around it. Uh, boredom, there's a lot of books you can read um, in the winter time, magazines that you don't get a chance to read. I've got like I don't know, five or six that I've got, had given to us and we've got in the mail. I can't even crack them open right now because I just have so much stuff that I want to do before winter comes. 
there's a saying around here and probably a lot of other states that have winter or snow is um, there's two seasons in Maine uh, one is winter and the other season is getting ready for winter that's pretty much as soon as the snow goes you start thinking about getting ready for winter again um, planting your seeds for your garden starting to get your firewood together to cut and split and put away um, there's lots of different seasons um, or things in that season to get ready for winter. But there's also we have fun and we go on our little journeys and stuff like that. So, um, you know, visit friends and. But that is what I think about sometimes. So I'm just encouraging you, if you're thinking about homesteading, not even going off grid, but I mean, it's cheaper to stay on grid, honestly. Well, it used to be, I don't know now, it's kind of getting a little crazy, but uh, the prices, but um, even if you're not off grid and you want to be, just start, start small, start with little things. Um, especially if you have kids, get your kids ready for things like that. Uh, kids love to keep the TVs on. They keep, love to keep the lights on. They leave the room and everything's still on. Everything's plugged in. Um, and they go in the next room and do the same thing. They need to learn you can't do that in an off-grid property. Um, it just doesn't work that way. Um, but start with education. Start with training showing them what they need to do and including them in the process. Our granddaughter's three and she's tall and she's learned to turn her light on in her room that she has with us uh, when she comes to stay once in a while and she'll leave it on. It's a process trying to get her to not leave it on. <laughs> so we're always going behind her going, you can't do that, honey. You have to turn it off. And uh, she just doesn't get it, but she will. And in the meantime, we'll just keep going behind her and turning the lights off <laughs> and the electronics and whatever else she's got going on. But um, anyway, just thought I would uh, give you some stuff to think about with that. And um, I hope you all are having a good day and uh, take care. And we'll see you next time.